So I ask permission to speak English, to cut across. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, I want to take this opportunity to thank Bishop. I also want to thank the audience. I know the weather is cold. We have a lot to do. Prepare for tomorrow, church, or whatever I want to do against Monday. But spend time to be here just to listen to me. That is extremely nice of you. Let's clap for ourselves. I believe tonight everybody is anxious to hear or see me speak. This is not going to be a boom speech. Not a hearing. Uh, in Ghana, what they say now is you have to be presidential. And I ask the question what do you mean by presidential? Presidential to them is that it is not anything that you have to respond. Sometimes you have to close your eyes. And a guy who was advising me said, Sometimes. It means not all the time. <laughs> Sometimes too, you have to respond. Because if you don't do that, others will think they are doing the right and meanwhile they are wrong. So permit me. Uh, what you've read about me, what do you know now? I'm the same. I can't change 100%. That would be wrong for Ghana. If I change 100%, it will be wrong. And I'll be faking. I don't want to fake. I want to be myself. Tonight, I want to announce to you that come April 2023, when MPP opens nomination, I'm going to pick the forms. and contest as a presidential candidate for MPP. And this is my second goal. And therefore, I have to be here under the invitation of Bishop Adontin to break the news officially. Maybe you've heard it, you heard it on radio, internet and all those things. Today I'm here personally to announce to you that in April I'm going to contest. I'll pick the forms. <laughs> Some people who know me very well ask why now? And my simple answer to them is there are times and seasons. And every time and every situation, this is the time that I believe, and I know most of you believe that, it is a time that we need a bold person, honest man, a businessman, and not a practical, pragmatic leader to move the country. In Ghana, our educational standard is very high. We produce professors, doctors, and the other theorists. In America here, they educate the kids, but they teach them how to reason. That is why even high school, when you are graduating from high school, 
I remember my kids living in affluent area. One of them was assigned to a, grow, a supermarket to go and work. And the mother wanted to go and drop us in no, let her take a car. Let him get a feel of how others live. Because you're going to school with a car. Whilst when we were going to school, we were walking. So let's teach him. Teach them. And through this, one of them also worked at a nursing home. One day she came back home crying that she doesn't want to change the old ladies, whatever. She said, you better go back. One day you grow too. Wow. Be like the old ladies. You got to do it. But in Ghana, when you see a graduate from University of Ghana Business School, and when they want to train him, say national service, and they put him or her as a receptionist. What is he going to learn? A graduate student, an engineer, you transfer him to be a receptionist. We are not practical. This is the time that we got to move Ghana. Amen. We got to move it. I'm not saying that we don't need education. Education is very, very important. But we need hands on, especially the technical students. They have to take over the country. Too much of English. Always speaking English. They speak a lot of English and their pockets are empty. It's a work. Because I employ all kinds of professions, I know that the technicians working on my new sites make more money than the graduates working at television, radio, and my offices. Yeah, because I give you an example where my steel plant, a contractor charged 11.8 million Ghana cities and his labor is 2.4 million Ghana cities. Whereas the highest paid worker at Oman FM or Ken City is 7,000 cities. 7,000 times 12 is 84. So if you take even 10% of the 2.4 million, the contractor who is a technician has made 240, but I know he makes more than 15%. But when the graduates come out of college and you assign them to these kind of specialization, they don't want to do it. Meanwhile, I remember a story that a roommate from Germany I helped to come to America. He's a Northern. Then we went to a lawyer friend's office. And that time, there were four Ashanti guys who were security, working as security officers. Then Willie said to me, you, you see all these Ashanti guys here? When you are in Ghana, you call me the Northerners Watchman. What are you doing here? In security, you are also Watchman. In short, we come all the way to America as graduates and start as watchmen. We qualify it as security. You know. So all I'm saying is that we can move our country if indeed we are pushing it. But before we do that, ladies and gentlemen, there is no magic anywhere that can change Ghana, except all of us collectively we change our mindset. <laughs> we need to change our mindsets. What do I mean by that? See these young kids among us here. 
when they were singing the national anthem, I saw my nieces singing. And when it came to Ghana, our national anthem, they were quiet. It means they are not proud to be Ghanaians. Let me put Bishop on the spot. I was here four days ago. He took me to his office and I saw American flag. And I was so disappointed. So I asked Bishop, what happened? Are you a Ghanaian or are you American? You have American flag here, you don't have Ghana flag here. Tonight I saw Ghana flag here. <laughs> We have to be proud of our country. And the only way we can do that is when we are honest to ourselves. We conscientize every individual. And look, we have nowhere to go. Home sweet home. Amen. If home sweet home then we have to change our mindset. When I was back there, I heard the MC saying that oh, he started from Germany. I started from Ghana. I was going to Ghana to Lagos to buy Peugeot parts, brought it to Ghana to sell. And one day I was robbed in Nigeria before I went to Germany, I was robbed. And the last word I remember that time was that. When they took the money from me, they gave the spare parts back. But I didn't have any Naira or me. So I asked the criminals, Oga, make you give me five Naira for them, for them, for then he said, Oh, Morgana, God don't punish you. Only with that. <laughs> then they pushed me, don't they? You know, then went to Germany. Wash plates. The supermarket pro match. We went through two hours. I happened to be here. I started at Zara Bakery. Gas station, gasiteria, Citco gas station. Then a taxi driver. So I went to university at the age of 33, Fordham University. Yeah. And here we are today. Amen. So when you see me, I stand for hope. That anybody who wants to succeed in life, irrespective of where you come from, once you are determined to make it, Yes, you can make it. You can make it. If you have to do it. Don't be myopic. Think big and dream big. Do things big. Ghanaians always misconstrue confidence to be arrogant. Let them call you arrogant. If your pocket is deep, you can talk the way you want to talk. It's good. That is what I want Ghanaian youth to believe in. We have myopic thinkers in Ghana. When you want to do this, they will tell you, oh, it's too big, we can't do it. Please, give me a break. We've lived in America for so long, we've seen how things work. Why can't we do it too? We can. We can do it. In the classroom at the age of 33, I happened to be in America who is who two consecutive times. I be the white people. But after college, the white is seen superior. Why? I personally believe the difference between a white man and a black man is that. When you are working at the same place and you work hard, a white man will promote you for working hard. In Ghana, when you work hard, they discourage you. They call you all sorts of names. Why are you stupid? Why are you working so hard for Kenya Japan and his family? 
that makes a big difference. I know most of you here want to go home. But this pull him down system in Ghana. They don't want you guys to come there and change anything. They don't want to change anything. So when you come there and you want to make a difference by changing the status quo, they begin to have problems with you. And it cuts across everywhere there is a black man. Everywhere. This is why you always see white people as superior. But in our various places, one on one, when we are given equal opportunities, you see that black men, we are capable. We are capable. That is what I want to instill in Ghanaian youth. That they should take their destiny into their own hearts. And Ghana, and almost 60 70 percent have tended to be beggars. And we are witness to it. Every morning, the first phone call we get comes from your sister, your brother, asking for money for his child. This is the time that if I'm given opportunity, I'll change the fortunes of the country. Amen. I have three pillars. And the three pillars are P, patriotic. H, honest, and D, discipline. <laughs> Patriotism, we should love our country. And associate it to the Ten Commandments, where it says, love thy neighbor as yourself. If you love your country, you will not steal your country. If you love your country, and we are asked to do eight hours, you will not do four hours. If you are honest to your country, you will not steal. If you are honest to your country, you will not inflate figures. If you are honest, you will not place your selfish interests above the national interest. And if you are disciplined, when they say you have to get to work at 8, you are there at 8, not 11, you'll be fired. If you get there at 11, you are fired. You've got to go home. I am not afraid of anybody because of votes. It's my principle and that is what I believe in. That is why America is working. If you have to report at 8, 8. If you are fired, no Bishop Adontin coming to plead for you. No lawyer coming to plead for you. No MP coming to plead for you. You are fired. Yes. Discipline. You see, one day, I lost my temper and I nearly slapped a girl. But my wife said, say, hey, how do you stoop so low? Say, sometimes you have to get down to their level for them to learn. Yeah. You know, I was driving to my house and I got to 37 military hospital. A lady was selling water. She gave one to somebody in the trotter. The guy in the traffic, she drank the water and gave the plastic to the girl. And the girl dropped it on the floor. I said, pick it. And she started insulting me. Yeah. And when you look at the car that I was using, and the girl standing there insulting me, because she dropped it, there's no discipline. I opened the door and my wife pulled me back. I wanted to give her a slap for her to learn. You can't just drop it. These same people will tell you Ghana is this, Ghana is that. Meanwhile, we are part of it. We are part of the problem. I have a fourth pillar 
And the fourth pillar is meritocracy. If you vote for me under my government, you can be my wife, you can be my son. If you don't marry the position, I will not give it to you. I will give it to you. That is the only way we can change our country. It's important. We need bold men to take bold decisions. I don't want to be president for eight years. I only want to be president for four years. And challenge and say what to be done. And there is difference between a leader and a politician. There's difference between a leader and a politician. A leader is the one who thinks of the development of his country and takes bold decisions irrespective of the replication. And a politician is the one who thinks of tomorrow's election and therefore is not bold to take the decision. I don't think of tomorrow's election. I think of today, how I can make a difference in society. It's true. Maybe Ghanaians will look at the four years and say, look, let's give him another mandate. That is more important. But for me to be afraid to speak the truth, for me to be afraid to take Ghana's money and bring it to America, I won't do it. I won't do it. I will invest in my own country and create employment for the youth that are not working. I'm a businessman and I know all the tricks. I'll block all the loopholes. I'll block it. Call Ghana first. I believe in Ghana. You know, I have set example at Ghana Gas and I realize Ghanaians themselves won't change. Because one day I had a problem in Kema, one of my coastals. So I had to dash down there around six. And that day I had, I had a board meeting. So I think I got back earlier and the traffic was so heavy for me to go to move and pick and come back to the airport. So I went straight to Ghana Gas. 